Hey folks, welcome to episode nine of the What the Futures podcast. I appreciate you tuning in for our final episode here of 2023. Of course, today's episode is brought to you by John Deere. I have been talking a lot about uh, something that uh, many folks wouldn't really uh, relate to to the John Deere name or the John Deere brand. You'd, you'd think equipment, you know, as I'm... Uh, you know, staring at my my John Deere uh, yard tractor right now, you think equipment, but uh, I've been talking a lot about Harvest Profit, and uh, if you want more details, go to harvestprofit.com. Uh, but the main message from me over the last few weeks is uh, is about financials in 2024, financial planning and creating your crop marketing plan into 2024. I uh, I hear that uh, many of you tuning in uh, have uh, reached out to Harvest Profit. So good on you for taking action. Uh, again, give yourself a financial boot camp here this winter and uh, get prepared uh, for what 2024 has uh, in store for us. Uh, every single year farming is, is obviously full of new challenges and, uh, and, and farming itself is challenging. Uh, take away some of that emotion, hopefully some of that stress, uh, and get down to making some sound financial decisions for your operation here in, in 2024. As I said last week in the takeaways, um, it, it's time to, to tweak your marketing plan. If you haven't done so already, uh, tweak your 2023, 2024 marketing plan and write it down. Um, do yourself a favor and write it down and uh, make sure you review it here in in short order uh all right so uh layout for the last show here of 2023 i'll just talk to you uh, about maybe one story here from 2023 that i i want to um uh just elaborate on or or shed some light on uh maybe give you a little bit of an update on what i'm watching in 2024 of course we're going to eat our veggies uh, which is our hard work of the week which uh is um Basically similar themes to the last number of weeks here. Um, but as you'll see, yellow pea prices are softening. So good good on you if you got that uh, yellow pea pricing done, uh, sold as we talked about last week. Um, yeah, so probably a bit of a shorter uh, show. I've also got Brett Waltz uh, joining me from BAM WX, and he's going to talk about El Nino and uh, the impact it's having across um, the world here uh, into the end of the year. Uh, of course, it is Positive Friday. Our episodes are always released on Positive Friday. Uh, so my positive moment of the week, it actually happened uh, last Saturday. Uh, I took my my daughter, my three-year-old daughter, and uh, we signed up for Santa's Anonymous uh, in Edmonton. And so we we went to uh, what my daughter call, now calls the North Pole, which is just a warehouse um, off of the Yellowhead Highway. Uh, on the east side of town, but my daughter was convinced that, that we were at the North Pole, which was fantastic. We did get to meet Santa Claus, and Santa Claus uh, came and, and thanked us for helping him out. Uh, so what we did is um, uh, we just donated our time and, I guess, fuel, and we donated 11 packages, or delivered, pardon me, 11 packages uh, to uh, families in need across uh, Edmonton. And... I, um, I've obviously, I've been in the Christmas spirit for a while here, um, with everything going on with the show and stuff, but, um, in one sense, it, it was a difficult day, uh, because you do get to meet and speak with families in, in need at this time of year. Um, and then for the other side, uh, just, you know, extremely grateful to be in the position that our family's in to be able to provide, uh, a great Christmas for our family and and our kids. Um, it was it was uplifting to see the smiles. It was uplifting to um, chat with folks, uh, you know, albeit uh, you know, new Canadians, um, single moms, single dads, uh, families from uh, the Philippines, from um, Somalia, um, Ukraine, <clears throat> from from all over the place, and it was only eleven. Right, um, but I was uh, I was happy to take my my three year old on that journey, and uh, it certainly just 
brings uh, puts things back into perspective for you uh, when you get home and uh, makes you uh, just grateful of what you have. And I'm looking forward to uh, a great Christmas here with my family and, and friends. And, uh, and 2023 may have been a, a stressful year on the crop marketing side, but a lot of positives uh, from, from this year. And uh, we've got a uh, you know, healthy family and, and uh, a fun Christmas uh, ahead of us. So that's my positive moment of the week and certainly look forward to doing that again uh, next year. Uh, of, of course, we've had uh, the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, you know, every day I've been putting something out. Uh, I, you know, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, obviously my singing voice isn't, uh, isn't where it should be, but, uh, we've been giving away some great prizes. Uh, I do want to thank, um, uh, Taurus egg, you know, times two, a queen had joined me twice, uh, in, in the 12 days, uh, combine, uh, yak of all trades for those that, uh, enjoy their Milwaukee tools, uh, egg, I three combine settings, farm bucks, uh, today is market master, and I've got John Deere joining me on um, or supporting the 12 Days of Christmas on Saturday as well. And then I wrap it up on Christmas Eve on Sunday as Buddy the Elf and uh, hopefully park that costume for for uh, at least another year because that wig is it's itchy, folks. It, I know my hair looks great, but it is it is itchy. Uh, all right. Many different ways to get in touch with the show. Uh, of course, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify um still trying to get out the google podcast a work in progress now you can text the show at 1-855-606-1889 or you can email me at what the futures at gmail.com that email address will be changing shortly throughout the holidays but uh for now that's still that'll work for a while here uh, we're on linkedin instagram x facebook come say hi interact with the show i i always appreciate the messages and of course, we have our, our website, whatthefuturespodcast.ca. Now, throughout the 12 days of Christmas, we still have a couple winners to pick. And this is pre-recorded on Wednesday afternoon. So we have winners uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we got a ways to go. Um, but so far, it's been really cool to uh, to interact with, with listeners. We've had winners from uh randolph manitoba or rudolph manitoba i have to look back now I'll, I'll go rudolph because it's the holidays but i think it's randolph manitoba uh we've got winners from red versus saskatchewan uh basically like a couple in manitoba three in saskatchewan a couple in alberta it's been really um spread out which is which is great um the show has been listened to in a few more countries now i don't want to go through the whole list but that's grown um we're at like 2200 of unique listeners um uh so that's been fun to watch and uh, our listens go up um every every week we're getting more and more listens so i uh, must be doing something right so it's been a lot of fun i appreciate the interaction and i'm gonna actually change things up to make it a little bit more interactive here in 2024 as well so stay tuned uh, uh for that uh all right um Let's see here. I uh, let's talk about 2023 for for a moment. 2023 into 2024. Now, um, 2024. I'm I'm going to save the prediction stuff for the new year. I'm going to park that for now. Um, so let's talk about 2023, and then let, let's go uh, eat our veggies here and get to our hard work. But um, in 2023, I, I would say that uh, I'm not going to review the the highs and lows. Um, but I, I actually have a message, and I think I teased this last week. But uh, and, and I'm not trying to come off. Uh, hopefully, I'm not coming off as as someone who's uh, full of themselves or, or arrogant about this. But um, January 16th of 2023, I got a message from a farmer, and uh, our son had been born a, a week prior. So Finn joined us January 9th, and um, I was definitely sleep deprived and tired and i was not watching markets i was i'm i spent most of the year on parental leave um but i did get a question from him and uh he just says have you watched you know markets at all and i just responded like yeah a little bit i've been checking checking them out and he says well you know what do you think like as a peer observer now um you know what do you think of these markets because i spent I spent like the the previous decade plus 
analyzing markets, analyzing what analysts, other analysts were saying or doing and, and helping farmers make better, stronger crop marketing decisions. So I lived in, I was living and breathing that every single day until August of 2022 uh, when I, you know, uh, wrapped up my contract with, with FBN and, and decided to take some time off. So I'm, you know, I'm sitting there in January of 2023 and I've haven't, I've been a little bit disconnected for, I guess, four months. Um, so he's, he says, you know, what do you, what do you think as a peer observer? Like, what are you thinking now? And he's like, I'm not looking for an analysis. I just want your observation. And so my response is that, um, you know, I haven't read anything. Uh, so I don't know who's bullish or bearish or what is necessarily going on in, in that factor. Um, and he's, I, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but markets seem to be, you know, trading sideways right now, call it five to 10% range over the last six months. Uh, Southern hemisphere harvest is, is underway. Uh, Northern hemisphere planting is starting in the next two months. And I say with all the cash and firepower to grow bushels in an expected stock market recession of a year, which doesn't happen really yet, uh, I think prices are going to drop 20 to 30% by Christmas of 2023. Now, again, my reasons that I write in here are, I don't know, they're they don't really come to fruition. Like I talk about Taiwan, China, is there going to be a war there? Could that be bearish? Uh, I talk about China's COVID policy. Is that going to be bullish or bearish? If, if, is there going to be a shift in policy? I, I say my bullish things are, are weather, which is such a easy layup because weather is always evolving and hard to predict. Uh, but weather does drive our markets in the spring like it normally does, but it drives our markets in the spring and rallies and turns into one of the best selling opportunities for your farming operation in 2023 now we're sitting here staring down like my grass in june was brown and dead outside of edmonton right like i no one's sitting here thinking of pricing grain we're thinking hey we got a 21 drought on our hands again turns out yes many in southern saskatchewan southwest saskatchewan southeast alberta experienced that same drought that they've had for five, six, seven years now in some of those areas, extremely frustrating, but it did turn into one of the best pricing opportunities of the year. So I was worried. Um, oh, wow. I got a visitor. I was worried about uh, a couple different things here, but my big point on what I was worried about was this cash come from the stock market into commodities and uh, with, with, um, you know, uh, inflation, cooling, interest rates climbing. How does that look? And that cash didn't really um, come into commodities, or if it did come into commodities, it came on the short side of uh, of commodities. Uh, from a bullish perspective, my biggest card was weather and um, fertilizer. How would we would we be deficient of fertilizer, and how would that how would that look? Now, again, I'm not a genius. My reasons here, some of them come to fruition, some of them don't. Um, but what ended up happening is a lot of these commodities, if you do the math from January to now to Christmas of 23, uh, have fallen somewhere between 20 and 30%. Um, some specialty crops have, have hung on due to the drought uh, and the short crop. But look at canola prices, look at wheat prices. Um, there's a whole bunch of markets, oats that you can look at and, and see that decline. Um, now, I, uh, you know, when I look at 2023, I had this similar sentiment in, in 2022 as well, in March of 22. And if anyone saw me speak publicly in, in the spring of 22 or late winter of 22, they, I said for the fall of 22, you should move all your crop off the combine, you know, as fast as you can. And uh, again, that sounds crazy, but that probably would have turned out not too bad. Um, and I said the same thing in, in 2023. You should harvest your crop and, and get it gone because we're in a downtrend. And uh, until there's a change in this trend, I, I think you have to be fairly aggressive. Storage has been expensive this winter. All right. Um, 
again, I really hope I'm not coming off like a jerk saying this stuff, but um, anyways, that, that's what, how the conversation went. Now, we talked about risky, you know, risk and cost going up and 2022 being a phenomenal year from a profit perspective. In 2023, I talk about losses and I say, hey, like I think in 2023, you have to make sure that you do your best to, to mitigate losses. And when you are staring down $16 canola at some point, and and you're doing your math on your break evens and your break evens are coming in at 15 or 16 bucks like that's just something we're not we're not used to seeing right and uh and now we're in a position where a lot of farms didn't get great yields um below average yields maybe crop insurance payouts weren't great and uh and there are losses out there not in all crops, and there's some that are are not too bad out there, but there's also some losses starting to happen as well. So uh, that's what I was worried about in January of, of 2023, okay? Now, I'm not a marketing genius. All, lots of things can happen throughout a year. And, uh, and I want to say for 2024, um, I, I wouldn't put that out there anymore. I, I wouldn't put put it out that I'm that I would see a 25, 20 to thirty percent decline in prices. Someone asked me the same question here just the other day, and I said, "Well, I said for now, I think I'll put ten percent down as the number." Um, but lots of stuff can happen and will happen, and markets will go up and down. That's what they do. So, um, so yeah, we'll see what what twenty twenty four brings. Now, twenty twenty three, going full circle here. Um, what I saw develop was that memory of 2021 with that, especially with that dry spring. And then when we get the rally in like August, we get another rally. Um, we actually, we don't know exactly what we got for, for yield potential or, or it's too early in the season to maybe think about being an aggressive seller. Um, but we have this, these bushels where we're undersold we don't have enough bushels sold um we produced probably more in a lot of cases than what we expected you can see the cats hanging around in the background they're driving me nuts here today but uh there we go on cue um so we get into harvest we're undersold we produce more and we're in a downtrend and it's hard it's hard to sit there in the fall and say, well, this is the best pricing opportunity I have of the year. I need to take advantage. It's hard to do that. So we, we harvest the crop and with the memory of 2021 and the bullishness into 22, the market's climbing, um, that, that handcuffs us and that cripples us uh, a little bit here as, as winter progresses and in, in the markets trend down like we have a downtrend we have our drought scare in the spring we have our traditional harvest rally which is normal to see that harvest rally and uh and then we we you know we store this crop with this bullish you know thought sentiment that we have a short crop in western canada and that put it in the bin prices are going to rally and that just really hasn't been the case with the exception of a few crops like maple peas, green peas, and yellow peas as well. So I, I in 2023, we can talk about what all happened, what stories came out, what stories didn't come out, blah, blah, blah. But I, I do think that uh, history of, of what happened in 21, big buyout situations occurred that nobody wanted to relive and re-experience that dry spring. And then we just get to this fall with uh, um, more bushels, less bushels sold, and uh, and just a trend that continues to decline for many factors. Um, and the same thing happened in the U.S., uh, where we where we saw better production than what was uh, than what was anticipated. So for twenty twenty four. For 2024, my, my suggestion, well, I'm going to start off with a quote, okay? 
And my quote is that the the beginning is always today. Now, this is from Mary Wallenstonecraft. Great name. Um, she was a, apparently a woman's rights activist back in the 1700s. But the beginning is always today. That is the quote. Okay. Because whatever happened yesterday or last week or last month from a crop marketing perspective, no matter how hard we try, we, we can't go back to the futures. We can't go back and change that. And so today is the beginning. Okay. And I, I had a call last week and I know he's going to listen to the podcast and I, I'm not trying to pick on him by any means, but I get the call tough week of crop marketing, feeling beat up, every position going the wrong way. And, you know, my, my comment will, was, okay, I, I get it. It's been a tough week. But what are we doing tomorrow? Like, what are we doing now when it comes to your crop marketing plan? Because, um, like, that's going to continue unless we have a, unless we see a change in this trend or figure out what's going to change this, change this trend. And for all of you here, as you turn the calendar over into 2024, there's going to be geopolitical events. There's going to be weather. There's going to be uh, demand, logistics. You know, we could talk about logistics hiccups right now going on. There's going to be lots of different things uh, coming at you. Always is. But just try to flip the page here into 2024. Try to erase the crop marketing memory that you've had of, of 2023. And the beginning is, is always today. All right. So uh, they park it and get after it for 2024 because it's a different ball game. You guys all know it's a different ball game right now. In many of these crops, we still have this downtrend. And, uh, and until we uh, see something happen that changes it, if it's South, um, Southern Hemisphere drought, Brazilian drought, um u.s drought you know whatever it is that that hurts production until we see that we're, we're still in a downtrend here um if in inflation rates are cooling in simple terms could we say that the prices of of food are going down maybe and with that wouldn't that trickle back all the way to the farm operation i i read um I listened to a podcast last, again, this was last January of, of 23, and it was uh, uh, an organization that um, uh, gives advice to um, end users, so if uh, the, creating food products, and, and their advice was buy the minimum, buy just what you need you know, to, to get through that week or that month or whatever it is, buy the minimum each time because prices are on the decline. And that's, you know, that happened. So uh, again, um, that is our trend. We we live that trend today. We've got India and their, um, pardon me, their um, election coming up so that we saw a spike in yellow peas. We've got strong demand for Canadian wheat. So spring wheat prices have held on. But generally speaking, we are in down, a downtrend here in, in our markets. Uh, all right, um, I'm going to talk more about 2024 in the January 12th episode. And uh, again, uh, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom here, folks. Um, I'm not trying to come off as doom and gloom. If I am, I, I apologize for that. But um, there's still always going to be opportunities. It's just we're going to have to be we're going to have to be sharp. And if I can just say one last thing, maybe if you still hung on <laughs> to these 20 minutes. Uh, I was chatting with a, a young grain marketing advisor uh, this week, and um, I, you know, I've I've had years of crop marketing where you know prices didn't move a whole bunch. It was, it was like a downtrend or it was a sideways trend, and you really had to be, you know, Johnny on the spot to grab some better prices throughout the year. And that's my advice to this young advisor was that's what's ahead of you in in twenty twenty four. 
go back to go back to basics pull out your seasonal charts when's the last time you guys looked at your seasonal charts like when are prices strongest when are they worse from a seasonal perspective get back to weather markets and weather events that impact markets um you're gonna have to make some big decisions and i wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if some of the best pricing decisions are next spring again um and those are some of the best prices of the year that's traditionally what happens and the crop you have in the bin today you know that's probably uh, one of your better pricing opportunities as well so anyways i just think you got to be on top of it as you always have to be but specifically here in, in 24. all right let's get to our veggies here then we'll get to brett waltz uh, and chat weather but let's get to our veggies not a big list today okay um uh again reminder always seek the advice of a professional all right not me i'm not a professional uh this is for information purposes only and uh, prices strategies can change so seek out your professionals number one yellow pea bids are softening i said it last week grab that 60 80 100 bucks an acre that india has handed over to you take it put it in the bank get those peas sold and uh here we are we're down a buck a bushel from what i can see um a buck to a buck 50 a bushel again if india wants to extend this um you know look at new crop opportunities at that time but um i still wouldn't hesitate folks i'd get it done because it's in all likelihood going back to that 11 to 12 dollar level um depending on where you are uh, and depending on what china wants to to buy at so go ahead and get those peas sold um second thing for today phosphate supply i don't have anyone that i can quote on this and say um that you know i've got it in writing that this is a concern but i did hear from a friend and a buddy and a friend of a friend that phosphate logistics are challenging and uh if you need to apply FOSS in 2024 you should get your name on that product sooner than later. We'll ask Josh Linville next time we, we see him, but um, from a Canadian retail perspective, Boss is a bit of a logistics challenge, and um, uh, apparently you may need to speak for that sooner than later. Now, of course, we did say a few weeks ago to get that fertilizer bought anyway, so it's really no change to that strategy. Um, and lastly, take a break. Take a break, folks. Spend time with loved ones and family. It's been a busy year. I've been a, a heck of a year. Take a break and uh, and enjoy the holiday season. All right. We'll go to Brett. After that, we'll wrap up this uh, final episode of, of 2023. I've got some trends in crop prices we'll get to and just a couple of headlines as well. Uh, but let's turn it over now to uh, our friend of the show, Brett Waltz. All right, folks, uh, joining me once again, I have Brett Waltz from BAM WX. Uh, the last time we chatted, Brett, was right before Thanksgiving. So we're in this uh, trend here of, of holiday uh, holiday weather updates. Yeah. Uh, how's it going over in, in your neck of the woods, Brett? Hey, you know, it was a little colder the past couple of days, but uh, it's been a, a mild December so far. It really doesn't mm -hmm. feel like the holiday season, to be completely honest. So it's kind of snuck up on us a little bit, I think. I can relate a hundred percent. It's uh, it's been mild here as well up in the uh, in the great north. Um, listeners are are a little bit curious. We've got Christmas, you know, just under a week away. Christmas Day is coming up here. Any chance of of uh, snow across the prairies here over the next few days? What are you seeing on the radar? Yeah, not not anything notable. Uh, not anything that is going to put down a, a widespread swath of uh, festive Christmas snow. Um, okay. there, there are some areas maybe further south into the U.S., west, western plains that could get some snow, but it, it, it's not it's not a great setup for a, a widespread snow event or a widespread white Christmas if you don't already have snow on the ground over the next week or so. Well, fair enough. I, uh, I've decided to take my family. We're going to go chase snow, so we're going to head up to the uh, Canadian Rockies between Christmas and New Year. So we're going to go find it um, at some point. There you go. Um, yeah, that's the spot to be exactly what what about the rest of of winter like we you know we traditionally get bitterly cold here you know in december and january across the canadian prairies is there you know what's it looking like for next the next month 
You know, uh, El Nino is continuing to dominate the pattern, and for that area, for the Canadian prairies all the way into the northern U.S., it, it is going to typically favor a mild pattern. And I don't see that changing consistently this winter, to be completely honest. I, I think that maybe sometime early to mid-January, you could have a bit of a moderation uh, of that abnormal warmth and get some more wintry conditions in there but I'm skeptical of how long it lasts. I, I, I just think that if you're in that part of North America, it's just going to be challenging to see your typical cold and snow this particular season, just because of how strong the El Nino state is this year. Okay. You know, it's, it's good for hauling grain. It's good for cattle. You know, it's easier on the cattle out there for sure. Uh, for those calving, you know, in the new year, that that's easier as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, again, I'll just have to tell my wife to cancel Mexico because it's, you know, the it's tropics up, up north here. Um, if I go a little bit further, mm -hmm. when, it, when we have a, a warm winter, you know, we headed into a winter dry across the, the prairies, uh, it, it's a little bit stressful seeing it brown and, and continuing to be dry. Uh, any indications into the spring of 2024? Do you see that El Nino pattern? evolving between now and spring or any indications out there? Yeah, so that's a great question. And it, it's really the speed at which you're naturally going to weaken El Nino some as we work into the springtime. That's just the natural progression of things. But how okay. fast it weakens will really be the key. Uh, actually, into the, the spring and summertime, if you can linger El Nino a little bit longer, as your jet stream naturally kind of shifts north throughout the season, it actually can lead to wetter springs and summers. But there's data right now indicating that it's going to weaken pretty rapidly as we work into spring and into summer. I think that for the Canadian prairies and maybe the western plains in the United States, I think that initially into spring, there's enough forcing left to produce more precipitation chances as we get into the planting season. I'm a little more concerned about areas further east, uh, the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, that could stay maybe drier a little bit longer throughout the spring season. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, that you know, that's given us a little bit of optimism, so that's good. Heading into Christmas, a bit yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, if we shift now to you know El Nino and maybe more of a global perspective, I had one grower, uh, Christopher, sent in a, a question. Uh, just about El Nino and its impacts in, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, obviously, that's a bit of a big area, but uh, if you want to, you know, we could chat about Brazil or Australia, I'll let you kind of take the lead on that. Yeah, for sure. I'll start out in, in South America and in Brazil because I think we're seeing pretty clear impacts of El Nino down there. And one of the areas of concern right now is Mato Grosso and into central Brazil because Typically, El Nino favors more moisture south in South America, more like uh, Argentina, down towards that particular yep. area, far southern Brazil, and north of that, central Brazil can be a problem. It's been very dry. I think that there are some maybe a little bit more rains in there, but they're not enough to make a huge difference, still drier than normal. And so that's an area where I, I think hot and dry drought conditions are probably going to continue to be an issue with that El Nino forcing into the new year. Further off into uh, Australia and Indonesia, historically speaking, because of all of the warm waters right over the Central Pacific, mm -hmm. west of that towards Australia and, and Indonesia, normally that leads kind of a leads to a lull in precipitation, more high pressure. And so uh, much of especially northern and western Australia and Ind Indonesia can be drier in these El Nino states. Now, you can get more tropical activity, and I think they actually had one in Eastern Australia and New Zealand uh, earlier this week. You can get more tropical activity down there, um, but elsewhere, you're probably looking at drier conditions. Okay. All right. I uh, appreciate that. Um, from a weather perspective, in the U.S., anything changed over, over in the U.S. the last little while here? What, what do you guys seen in your backyard? Yeah, nothing crazy. I, I do think, as I kind of mentioned for the Canadian prairies as well, early to mid-January, to me, that's the time frame to watch for maybe some cooler air, maybe some more wintry conditions 
I wouldn't mm-hmm. say cold. I would hesitate to use the word cold because uh, when people hear cold, you know, they think Arctic cold. I don't really see that. Uh, but I do think that there are more opportunities for normal winter conditions early to mid-January. The better chance, I think, in the eastern half of the country and where we're at in the Ohio Valley for colder weather would be February. Uh, that's kind of been our forecast for a while, and I don't really see any change to that right now. I still think that aside from maybe that brief period in early January, it's still a milder look, especially the further north you go overall. Okay. All righty. Uh, that all sounds good. Um, anything else top of mind that you want to cover off today? Uh, I don't have anything else off the top of my head. I, I really appreciate you having me on, and I want to wish you and everyone watching a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you, Brett. Have a great Christmas, great holiday season. Uh, folks, um, uh, BAMWX launched uh, Clarity uh, back in November. Brett, how can they, how can farmers uh, get more details on, on your new um, uh, program, Clarity, your new um, software? I don't know what to call it, but how can yeah, they get details yeah. on that? It's a new platform, um, platform. but there go to uh, bamwx.com. You can click that schedule a demo link that's on the homepage and one of our representatives will reach out and see what we can do to help you. I did want to mention that made me think of this real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. Starting this afternoon and evening, we're actually running a sweepstakes to end the year uh, countdown to 2024. And so there'll be a pop up beginning this evening on our website. Um, and we're giving out just daily prizes for people that that sign up for that. Um, and so anything Perfect. from hats to tumblers to gift cards uh, should be a nice, fun way to ring in the new year. Fantastic. Sounds great. Appreciate that shout out. Um, thanks again, Brett. We will uh, touch base with you probably in the later part of uh, latter part of January. We'll connect again and, and see what's evolving here for weather. So thank you so much, sir. We'll talk to you in the new year. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Brett. Uh, again, great getting a, a weather perspective. Uh, we'll get another one here in January and see if things are changing for the spring. I almost forgot here, before we get to market trends, um, I uh, I almost forgot to give away our bag of P516L. There it is right behind me in the studio. Uh, Jacob and Becky Boychuk, they've been uh, sponsors from the beginning here, all nine episodes and uh, the great folks at Tower Farms, Pioneer Seed, and Corteva. Uh, we This is our first bag of canola seed that we're giving away on the show. We will continue to give away canola seed uh, in the new year, but we are going to change it up a little bit on how to get your name entered. Everything is a little bit trial and error, and uh, we're going to switch it up here. We're going to spend the holiday season um, doing a little bit of uh, revamping, and we'll come at you with a, a new way to get entered to win for January. Now, before we get to that, though, uh, we, uh, of course, had questions come in uh, from all sorts of folks. We had uh, questions about, uh, you know, what's going to happen with this yellow pea market from Zoltan. Uh, Christopher asked uh, about the El Nino weather pattern and the impact to, to Indonesia and, and Australia. Uh, we had Nathan ask about wheat futures way back at the beginning. Uh, I believe Lynn asked a question, might have been in regards to canola. Uh, so we had uh, we had Keaton with a question on mustard prices as well. So we had quite a few enter. So I'm just going to uh, spin the wheel here. I just realized you guys can't hear the wheel spin because um, it's in my headphones. But uh, we'll let that spin and that's going to pick our winner here in just a moment. Uh, so thank you everybody who, who participated. Uh, in in the show, uh, asking questions, uh, who recorded their voice. Um, you know, it's great to see. Uh, of course, I've got my, I have to thank my guest here, uh, Mittens, for joining today's episode. She's been uh, just all over the map here on, on today's episode. So, uh, all right, without further ado, our winner of our first bag of P516L uh, is Brad, uh, Brad Farms, uh, just outside of Tokefield, Alberta. And he asked a question in regards to oats. So congratulations, Brad. Uh, thanks everyone who, uh, who participated and thanks, uh, Jacob and Becky with Tower Farms, uh, for donating that bag of canola seed. Again, we'll have a new way to win here in January, uh, but we have, uh, lots of canola seed to give away. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Uh, am I missing anything else on housekeeping items here? I uh, hopefully, hopefully not. Okay, trends in in markets. Uh, I know that you guys all know the major headlines. You know that Brazilian weather is obviously trending maybe drier here after a a couple days of moisture during Christmas. It looks like it'll trend drier in January. But we've got weather issues in in South America. We've got logistics issues. Uh, we've got the 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 Panama Canal with low water volumes. We've got the Suez Canal. Uh, under attack if you're shipping through there uh, you've got the black sea with the uh, russia uh, war on ukraine logistics are a little bit of a a, a challenge right now um major waterways uh under attack and um and even though it's not necessarily going to lead to like a shortfall of of crop or food for the time being it does add extra expense uh, to get uh, around and, and go to those safer channels and around the southern tip of Africa there. So um, those are kind of the big stories here right now. And I know you guys are well-versed in all this. So let's talk trends for a minute. We've got um, an upswing in, in green peas. I heard 20 bucks for green peas. I actually should with our eat, eat your veggies, but green peas at 20 bucks. Wow. Uh, green lentils also trade. I think I saw like, 74 75 cents a pound large green lentils maybe even up to 76 now uh, that's trending higher that's on the upswing as well uh you notice green peas green lentils christmas colors right there's a there's a trend there there's a, there's a sign uh markets that are steady i'm gonna say red lentils steady oats steady as well up 10 cents in alberta today so steady there I'm going to call spring wheat steady, even though we did hear of a $10 bid in Alberta at Providence Grand. I'm still going to call it steady because I've noticed central Saskatchewan nines, 925s. There hasn't been a lot of change there. I'm going to call it steady. Same thing with a CPS red or even a feed barley, a feed wheat, and a soft white. Those are all pretty steady in my opinion. Uh, at this time, feed barley value is even ticking up a little bit for new crop uh, as well. Um, so yeah, feed barley, we did see a six trade. Um, into that uh, central Alberta range um, going down into Lethbridge. Uh, I think we're not too far from a seven. I should have looked that up though into southern Alberta. Um, so prices, I'd call them a little bit of an uptick there. Maybe freight was a little cheaper instead, but the price seemed a little bit better than the last week or so. Uh, what's trending lower? I'm going to say malt barley. I'm not seeing much good news in malt. Uh, and canola and soybeans also trending lower here into the end of the year. So I'm going to check my script here. That's it. I am back on January 12th with 2024 crop rankings, somewhat of a predictions episode, I'll call it. Uh, until then, I'm actually going to focus on cleaning up the website. Yeah, let's call it called cleaning up the website. Uh, blogging. I'm going to try to get to writing. I used to do a lot of writing. going to get back to writing in 2024. That's my uh, New Year's resolution. I've got two. I want to write. Um, hopefully you guys like that. So I'll get back to writing and blogging. And personally, uh, I'm going to watch movies between uh, 1984 and 1994. I'm going to focus on that here in 2024. A lot of fours there, uh, but a great 10 years of movies. And if I'm going to watch something, I'm going back, uh, back to the uh, to the old stuff. And I want to catch up and rewatch some of those classics uh, from the 80s and 90s. Um, and then, of course, you know, read more books. I definitely always want to read more books. That was my my resolution in 23. I did do a lot more reading as well. Um, so that's always good. So, um, yeah. All right, folks, uh, from the What the Futures podcast. Have a great Christmas. I know you'll hear from me on, on the 12 days of Christmas yet for a little bit, but uh, have yourselves a, a fantastic Christmas uh, from my family to your family. Uh, all the best in 2024. And uh, I'm excited to see what the show can, uh, can do for you here in, in the next year. So take care. I'm out.